Welcome everybody. My name is David and today I will be talking to you guys about a small introduction to logic. Now I won't be writing as much as I will be talking in this video because logic is a very, very complex matter that students have trouble with uh, when they first get introduced to it. Logic is, if you want a definition, the study of formal reasoning through statements and propositions. Despite being in the domain of math, it's nothing like anything you've ever seen before if you've never heard of logic. You could be a genius in math and be terrible at logic, but the good news is, if you're bad at math, that does not necessarily mean you're bad at logic. It's a very daunting subject, so let me make it easier for you with this video. So let's start off by talking about what a predicate is. A logical predicate is a property that is evaluated to be either true or false with given input. We denote predicates by using capital letters followed by arbitrary objects. Let me give you an example. So on the board, I've written P of X. P is the predicate or the property, and X is this arbitrary object. And when you convert it to English, it's read as X is an arbitrary object that satisfies this property P. Now, P of X itself already looks familiar. In mathematics, it kind of looks like a function, right? You know, the classic F of X. That's exactly what you can think of it as. So in terms of functions, we're essentially dealing with a matter of inputs and outputs. In high school, I was taught a sort of machine analogy where when you put something in the machine, it outputs something. It always does. So on the board, I've drawn a machine. Um, I'm not the best drawer, once again. But um, it is a machine of the function f of x equals x. And when you input an x value, you get a y value in return. That is the output. So if we go back to the logical predicates, you can think of a predicate as a function whose range or output is limited to true or false. It's actually easier than an actual function. And remember, x is an arbitrary object. It can be anything. The object and the predicate combined is what determines an output of true or false. So on the board, I've written some examples of predicates that you will see later on in future videos. And the first two are actually pretty familiar already to you. It's the greater than and less than symbol. Those are predicates. The other three operators, though, I will teach in a future video. Um, you don't have to know what they mean right now. As I said before, a predicate by itself does not have a truth value. For example, the greater than or less than symbol don't mean anything on its own, right? Going back to the function example or the machine, this is the greater than machine. You have to put something in it for it to actually spit out something, aka you need inputs. If that didn't seal the deal, let me give you an example that will. Let's start with an example everyone loves, food. So I've named a predicate P, um, where P is a type of edible food. So as you can see, that statement by itself is pretty meaningless. So you would need actual input to determine whether or not it's food. So when you write P of X, where X is an arbitrary object, X is a type of edible food. Now that we've defined the general function, if we replace um, anything with x, the machine over here should now output um, a value of true or false. So if you were to input x as a burger, a burger is definitely a type of edible food, so that would output true. And if you input curry, that is also another delicacy, which is a food, so that would be true as well. But uh, if you input something else that's not a food, like a Tide Pod, it would be false. 
public service announcement, don't eat Tide Pods. So before I end off this video, um, there's one more definition that I want you to leave with, and that is the name for those examples that I just gave you. P of burger, P of curry, P of Tide Pod. Those are actually called propositions. A proposition is the actual statement that is true or false. This includes the input and the predicate combined. On the board are some propositions. P of burger, like in the last example. Four greater than nine. That is false. David is cool. Obviously true. Now in that last example, is cool would be the predicate and David would be the arbitrary object or input for the proposition. Now, the thing I've written in red, 4 plus 9, that is not a proposition. 4 plus 9 is 13. That's not true or false. That is not a statement where the result is true or false. It's, it's just a math equation. Logic is really fun, and I was just the beginning of it. I was just a short introduction video. Hopefully I've piqued your interest, and you can continue joining me on this adventure of venturing through logic. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!